You better not say that. That's what we reporters covering COVID were told. There are certain things you must not say. For example, MSNBC told us. From a certain corner of the right is this theory that the coronavirus, quote, escaped from the lab. Escaped the lab? How ignorant. Everyone knows it wasn't made in a lab. This coronavirus was not man-made. That is not a possibility. And mere debate about that, we were told, posed a new threat. Not the virus itself, but misinformation. Many media decided it's our job to make certain theories disappear. One theory that just won't go away is that this virus came from a Chinese lab. Facebook totally banned this false claim, but now the FBI director says COVID's origin is... Most likely a potential lab incident in Wuhan. The Department of Energy has concluded COVID-19 likely came from a lab leak in China. So did the smug media apologize and say, we shouldn't be in the censoring business? No, they just ignore what they did. The closest to an admission of guilt we found was this from Chris Hayes. I have to say, there's a kernel of truth, the idea that some folks were too quick to shut down the lab leak theory. Media imposed similar bans on what you could say about masks when Senator Rand Paul made this true statement. The masks don't work very well, particularly the cloth mask. YouTube suspended him. And Facebook throttled the reporting of science journalist John Tierney when he pushed back against forcing kids to wear masks. More than 10,000 parents said that masks were giving their kids headaches, making it harder for them to concentrate. Partly false, said Facebook, while cutting him off. Yet now, a lot of science says wearing masks... Probably makes little or no difference. Perhaps the most blatant case was the media's claim that the New York Post scoop about Hunter Biden's emails just could not be true. We're supposed to believe that Hunter Biden in a drunken stupor dropped off his laptop in, I guess, apparently QAnon repair office, right? Obviously, Russian interference, said the media. It's likely Russian disinformation. It is so obviously a Russian operation. Twitter's bosses wouldn't even let users decide for themselves. They labeled the Post report potentially harmful and blocked users from sharing it. Facebook was sneakier. They suppressed the story instead of banning it outright. Of course, now the media admit the Post story was true. Several news organizations have authenticated many emails from the laptop. So the media who smeared this as a Russian plot, do they now admit they were wrong? No. They just say things like, Nobody cares about Hunter Biden's laptop. Bad as the media were. What's worse is that government wanted to censor. We've done nothing in terms of content regulation or in terms of content oversight. Senator Mark Warner and some other politicians recklessly proposed using government force. Fortunately, that never happened. But government did apply lots of pressure. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. The White House even urged Facebook to crack down on private messages on WhatsApp. We'll never know about all the government's attempts to censor. But now that Twitter's new CEO opened his books, we can see some of the things government tried to do. Moderation requests from every corner of government, from the FBI, the DHS, the HHS, DOD. The CIA and State Department. And even individual politicians. Maine Senator Angus King's staff complained about accounts that were anti-King. Congressman Adam Schiff's office asked Twitter to remove content, suspend many accounts, and suppress search results. To Twitter's credit, a staffer responded, no, we don't do this. At one point, the Department of Homeland Security created something they called a disinformation governance board. Its boss posted this video. They're laundering disinfo and we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. That was a step too far for the public. The Biden administration is facing fierce backlash for convening a group called the Disinformation Governance Board. Homeland Security terminated the board. Still, lots of government agencies wanted to control what you read and heard. Often they protected us from the truth. And when they got caught, the White House casually brushed off Twitter's revelations. Twitter was so haphazardly pushed this distraction. Uh, that is a that is a full of uh, old news. Old news only because they concealed it for so long. 
At least today, finally, we can discuss those things we weren't allowed to say. COVID-19 likely came from a lab leak. The masks don't work very well. The laptop data we had analyzed showed no evidence it was faked. Eventually, the truth does come out. But let's not let anyone in government or out say, we'll be the gatekeepers. We know what's true. They don't. Here at Stossel TV, I'm the gatekeeper. But instead of censoring, here we'll debate. More information, not less, is the best way to get to the truth.